2021 CCL CONCACAF Champions League preview and predictions. I am your host, Mike Guyalmi, Sons of a Pitch Soccer Podcast, hanging out with all things CONCACAF. Ryan Anderson, how you doing today, man? I'm doing amazing. It's a good morning, good day to talk some CONCACAF Champions League. It's always a good time, but especially right now. Absolutely. We're getting close as of recording. It's about a week and a half out. Hopefully going to get this released in the next couple of days. So uh, lots of fun. This tournament's going to be good. A lot of good teams in this tournament. Uh, Starting out on Tuesday, April 6th, it's going to be on Fox Sports in the United States. So you'll be able to watch it there. I don't know as far as what the TV schedule looks like in Mexico and or Canada, but uh, in the United States, it's all on Fox Sports. And uh, thank God, because I love watching CCL, all the games, not just the MLS teams, not just Toronto FC, even though, you know, I'm a TFC fan, obviously you are too, Ryan, with your jersey <laughs> yeah. on, uh, you know, but all the games. So let's get right into it. But first, before we start, Ryan, what, let, let, let everybody know where they can find you and what you do. On YouTube, you can find me, Ryan Anderson, it's just my name. Put Toronto there if it doesn't come up, like in the first couple of search results because YouTube's finicky like that. Back in December, it was all the way up there. And now, I don't know. On Twitter, it's Ron Anderson underscore 27. And on Instagram and TikTok, just put the pl- uh, period dot where the underscore is because same username, Ron Anderson dot 27. But, you know. All right. So, uh, yeah, Ryan, you cover a lot of the uh, CONCACAF League. You cover basically everything CONCACAF. So everybody go check out Ryan's page and uh, go subscribe and like some of that stuff. He'll be doing some live stream reactions during CONCACAF, I'm assuming. Uh, Yes. We will be as well over here on Sons of a Pitch, live stream reactions for Toronto FC against Lyon, as well as possibly some other games. And with that, guys, smash that subscribe button down below. Turn on your notification bell as well so you don't miss any of our awesome American soccer content. And let's get right into the game. So first game up on the schedule, Ryan, is the Marathon against Portland Tie, Tuesday, April 6th at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Ryan, talk to me. Do you see an upset here from Marathon over Portland? I don't see an upset. I think Portland can easily win this tie, especially if their big players start coming back throughout it. But even without Blanco or Nia's Goda, they could easily win this tie. Portland's a strong team. They fortified their defense throughout the offseason with signings from Liga Emekis. Easily for them, they have the firepower offensively with a Bobase and Valeri, and they have the defense to win this tie. No problem for me. All right, I'm with you 100%. I think Portland gets through easily over the two legs. Uh, I just don't think Marathon can hang with a team like Portland. So, all right, we both got the Timbers moving on to the next round. How about the next matchup between MLS teams and Caribbean teams? Alahulense against Atlanta United on April 6th at 7 o'clock. I've got Atlanta United here. I think Atlanta is much, much improved over the offseason. Um It does give me a a bit of caution due to the fact that they have a brand new coach and so many new players in. However, I think Atlanta is just too, too strong, too much talent for Ala Hulenze. For me, it depends if Joseph Martinez plays. If he plays, which it looks like he will, they'll go through easily. He'll carry them. Even if their defense is a little bit better, they have more offensive pieces. Gabriel Heinz is a better coach than DeBoer or Steve Glass. Atlanta... We'll probably go through Joseph's play, playing. You, you see it there. Alo Holense is a very good team. They are the reigning CONCACAF League champions, but I don't think that's enough to put Alo Holense through. Atlanta will go through pretty close. It will be a fun tie to watch, but Atlanta will pull through by the end of it. All right, so surprise team here, Arkaye from Haiti, going up against Cruz Azul. In the next matchup, this one I, I feel bad for Arkai. They they played well in the champion or the Concacaf League to get here, uh, but that's pretty much it for them. I think Cruz Azul absolutely wipes the floor with Arkai over the two legs. What do you think? Same here. Cruz Azul is going to stomp them out as quick as you're stomping a bug in the wilderness. It, it's it's not for them. This is not for them. They should be happy. They're flashing the pan. They got a horrible draw for them, but. The way they beat Forge, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. So, yeah, Cruz Azul easily beats Arkai. All right. 
Sounds good. So now moving to the next game, Philadelphia Union of MLS going up against Saprissa, Costa Rican powerhouse Saprissa. This is, I think, going to be a better matchup than people give it credit for. Uh, I do see Philadelphia moving on through this tie, uh, but I think it's going to be very close. I'm going to go with a one-goal victory on aggregate over the two legs, uh, but I got Philadelphia going through. How about you? I actually have Saprissa going through this tie because – I think Philadelphia does not have the experience in the Champions League. This is their first time. The players that got them there, such as Mark McKenzie and Brendan Aronson, are not there. Brujo Martinez got injured in the preseason. For me, I think in Saprissa, in Costa Rica, it's going to be kind of like Toronto Independiente back in 2019. They find themselves in a hole that they just can't get themselves out of at Subaru Park. They fight valiantly. But Teresa finishes it off and goes to the quarterfinals. All right. So we uh, we both see differently there. Should be interesting to see how that tie goes. Now, for Lyon hosting Toronto FC in the first leg on April 7th at 7 p.m., this Lyon TFC tie, I think it's going to be really good. Lyon is starting to turn things around in Liga MX. They were doing horrible for a long time. Now the last couple games are starting to play a little bit better. TFC, this is going to be their first game under head coach Chris Armas. First game in a long time uh, because I don't even know what they're doing in the preseason other than scrimmaging right now based on all the travel and whatnot that they're going through. So uh, this one is really hard for me. I think it's uh, I think it's closer than, uh, than some think. I think TFC has a good chance to get through. And uh, for me, I actually have TFC beating Lyon. Uh, and, and winning the tie because I, I think they're just going to be so strong in that first game down in Mexico. They're going to come out like their backs are against the wall. They have to get a result. They're going to come out on fire for Chris Armas, and they'll be able to get the job done. Then the second leg is going to be in Osceola County Stadium in Florida. It's a baseball stadium, folks. This is uh, complete trash, and Leon's going to walk on this field and be like, where the hell are we? What is going on? And I think that will help Toronto FC get the victory there in their home leg. So I've got TFC moving on. What do you think? I totally agree. I think Toronto's going through. They'll have a good couple of games in the preseason before that game against Inter Miami's USL side and Columbus Crew on the first. And during in between the legs, they'll have another friendly against Miami's MLS team. I think Toronto will be ready. Chris Armis wants them to go for CCL. These boys want CCL just as bad as I want it. These boys are fighters. They know what to do in CONCACAF play. We have a manager who actually has tactics. I think we could do it. Leon's getting better, and I like what they're doing. I want it to be close. I'm, I'm kind of happy they're getting better. I don't want to beat up on a languishing Leon side. I want to see this be an amazing tie. I want to see this be a close tie, but I think Toronto finishes it off. All right, good stuff. Olympia and Club America. Olympia, no chance. Club America has been playing extremely well under their new coach, Santiago Solari. Uh, I've got Club America winning this tie without a problem and moving right on to the next round. What do you think? I think Olympia has a better chance than you're giving them credit for. But yes, I think Club America goes through. I think Olympia is a good team, but with A.B. Flores being out because of a Red card for a handball during the restart in Orlando, one of their best players. Yeah, I think it, Club America easily takes this tie, especially down at Azteca. No problem for Club America to go through. All right, so the next matchup, two left in the first round. The first one up here, Real Esteli against Columbus Crew. Columbus reigning MLS Cup champions, they're going to be going for this tournament. I think, uh, you know, that anytime the MLS Cup champion gets into the tournament, they kind of put a little extra oomph behind the CONCACAF Champions League, where some teams that are coming in, you know, off of just a decent season last year, they may not go as hard. You saw it last year with Seattle, even though they got upset uh, in their matchup. And then uh, as well, the year before that with TFC, uh, and that Atlanta, they came out strong. So a lot of a uh, lot of good good runs by those MLS champions. This one, I think Columbus against Real Esteli. Columbus is just too deep, too strong, 
and uh, they'll be able to handle Real Esteli. I think this one's going to be similar to the Club America Olympia ties, as well as like Atlanta and Alajuelense, uh, Cruz Azul and Arcaí. It's going to be a blowout. Yes, for sure. Columbus has got more depth during the off season. They've had an amazing off season. One of the only good off seasons for MLS teams during this pandemic year. Columbus is a good team already. They're going to have a great season on all fronts. Will it be enough? I don't know, but they'll definitely get through Real Esteli pretty easily in the round of 16 for sure. All right, so the last matchup, we've got Atletico Pantoja of the Dominican Republic against Monterrey of Mexico. Monterrey's had a horrible season in Liga MX, but I don't think it's bad enough against Atletico Pantoja. Every once in a while, there's usually an upset in this first round matchups here of a Caribbean team getting through over either an MLS team or a League MX team, usually MLS. But uh, I don't see it happen this year. All of these matchups, I can't see it happening because even if you say, okay, Club America beats or Club Leon beats Toronto FC in the first round, that's not really a crazy upset, you know, and, if, and vice versa with Toronto FC. So I think I don't really see a crazy upset in this first round. I've got Monterey moving into that uh, quarterfinal round. I got Rayados moving through over Pantoja. Monterey's an okay team. Yeah, they're at top of the table, but they're not as special as Mexican fans are making them out to be this year. Hell, all the teams in Mexico aren't as special as the fans are making them out to be this year. I think the best team in Mexico offensively right now is not even in this tournament. The firebrand Toluca is not even in this tournament, which leads to where... That kind of hints where I'm going with this bracket, but Rayados will still get through this tie for sure. All right, so we'll take it to the uh, the top left side of the bracket here, Club America and Toronto FC, and this is where the, the matchups start to get good. The no, it was every year. What's that? It was Cruz Azul, Toronto. Oh, Jesus. I got CA written down here. <laughs> All right. It's okay. It's okay. I got the whole thing. <laughs> nice. All right, let me give it a second of silence here, and then we'll run it through. At least it's not live. Right? All right, back to the top left corner of the bracket. We've got Club America again. I just fucking said it again. What an idiot. <laughs> Hold on. Let, I need to write this down on here. Where the hell's my mouse to my second computer? There we go. Azul. All right, top left side of the bracket now, the round of eight, the quarterfinals. This is when the matchups start getting good. There's no crazy dark horses left anymore. It's usually at this point, Liga MX and MLS matchups. First one up, Cruz Azul and Toronto FC. This one is, this is going to be a good one. Uh, a very strong Cruz Azul team this year. They started out like complete garbage in the beginning of the season, kind of similar to Club Leon. And then Leon kind of started to turn things around. You're seeing the same thing now with Cruz Azul. TFC, I think it, the, the first round matchup is good for them against Leon. I don't see them getting past Cruz Azul in the second round. I think Cruz Azul is just too strong. And uh, TFC is going to be starting to focus on that regular MLS season. So I've got Cruz Azul beating TFC, and that's where TFC's run ends in this matchup. Ryan, I'm sure you disagree with me. I, I have Toronto going through Cruz Azul because to me, on paper, Leon's a better team than Cruz Azul. If Toronto can handle Leon, I think they could handle Cruz Azul. Toronto's a good team. As I said, they're going to fight for every inch. They may go out, as you said, but they're going to do it fighting. I think it's going to be a very close tie, but I think Toronto pulls it off at the last couple of minutes, last second, very close to the end of the second leg, whether that be home or away. But I think Toronto goes through. I believe in the Reds. I believe in this team. All right. Good stuff. Now down to the other half of that bracket. You got Monterey and Columbus in that matchup. Both of us have those teams there. Monterey and Columbus, I, I see Columbus beating Monterey. Uh, I think Columbus is a extremely strong team, probably the best in MLS again. They they ran the table in one MLS Cup last year. They only got better this offseason. And uh, in, in Bez, we trust. I still do. And uh, I think Columbus gets the victory over Monterey to, uh, to head into the semifinals. Same here. I think 
Columbus will easily, well, not easily beat Rayados, but have a pretty stress-free time with them. As you said, I do still trust in Tim Bezbachenko. I miss him in Toronto. He's doing amazing things back at home in Columbus because he is a Columbus boy. And I hope they go deep until they face Toronto. But, yeah, I'm hoping Columbus does well in this tournament, and I think they could easily beat Rayados of Monterey. Nice. All right, so to the other half, Philadelphia. I have Philadelphia and Atlanta meeting up in uh, in that quarterfinal. For me, Philadelphia and Atlanta, I think Atlanta wins this one pretty easily. Philadelphia, they've got to make up for those losses of Brendan Aronson and, uh, and then losing Brujo Martinez in, uh, in the preseason, like you mentioned. So Philadelphia, I think they've actually taken a step back this season, uh, and I see Atlanta – really that hype down there is is nuts as well. So I expect to see Atlanta move on to the semifinal out of that matchup. Now you've got Saprisa and Atlanta. What are your thoughts? I think Atlanta will beat Saprisa. They're a strong team. If they could beat Al Holense, Saprisa was the runners up in the CONCACAF league and Al Holense are better than them in the Costa Rican league as well. Atlanta will do their job and get to the semifinals. Joseph will fire them there and Moreno and all those players will also fire them there. So, and Lopez. Right. So, I like so, it. Good stuff. Down to the last quarterfinal matchup Club America and the Portland Timbers. This will be a very good game, very good tie of two legs. Uh, but for me, I've got Club America getting through the Timbers. I think Club America right now is kind of a team of destiny. If you see where I'm going with this one with Santiago Solari uh, as head coach, I love Santiago Solari. I loved him as a player for Inter Milan when I followed him. He's doing well with as a coach, uh, replacing uh, El Piojo, who was, to, in my opinion, one of the worst coaches ever. I can't believe that guy even had a job. Uh, and I think Club America goes through over Portland to meet up with Atlanta in the semifinal. Same here. I think Club America beats Portland. Even if Portland get, they could have a saving grace if they get Blanco and he is Gota back, but we don't know exactly when that will be. And I was talking with Rocky about that, but for me, I still think Club America has the advantage. They'll get through slightly to the semifinals. It's going to be a good tie. It's going to be a close one, but I think it's America. All right, so we'll stay on that side of the bracket with Atlanta and Club America playing in that semifinal. A tough matchup for Atlanta. I don't see – I think Atlanta doesn't make it to the final. I've got Club America going past Atlanta in the semifinal in a very close one, but I think Club America gets it done. I think you're right. Club America gets to the final even in August because these gangs are all the way semifinals – or all the way in August because of all the stuff in the summer, like Gold Cup and so on and so right. forth. I don't think Atlanta will be like strong enough to beat America. Will it be closer than people expect with the time passing? Yes. But I think Club America are just a better team. I think Solari will have more time to build his tactics up, and they are still a better team than Atlanta, and Solari is a better manager than Heinza easily enough to the final Club America. All right. So to the other side, I've got Cruz Azul against Columbus. You've got TFC against Columbus. Uh, I've got the crew with the upset there. I've got, I've got faith in Columbus this year. I think they are the MLS representative in the final. Um, I say Columbus Club America final. What are your thoughts? I think Toronto could beat Columbus. I really do. By August, Toronto will definitely be firing on all cylinders. I could just see them. It'll either go way bad or way good. I'm going to go down the lane of way good. I think they'll be firing on all cylinders. They'll be playing exactly how Armis wants them to play. They get to the semifinal. They're going all the way. With the time split, the way they split it, they're going all the way. I think they're going to win this semifinal. They're going to give Columbus a game, home and away, and they'll win this tie and go to the final. Right, so – that puts the final then for you, Club America against Toronto FC. It's a one-leg tie this time, not two. Uh, so that's, that bodes well. What do you think? How do you see that, that final matchup going? 
as I said, I think Toronto, if they could get to the semifinals, they're going all the way. I think Toronto FC will be your 2021 Scotiabank CONCACAF League champions. Go to Tokyo for the Club World Cup. I hope I can get there, but if I have to wake up at the butt crack of dawn to watch those games, I have no problem with it. But, hey, Toronto's nice. going to win. I see them doing it. All right. There will be an MLS yeah. champion this year. They're going to win the Champions League, and it's going to be a day to celebrate. A weekend to celebrate because that weekend's Halloween. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to have nice. some fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you've got TFC lifting the trophy, Conky Calf champions. For me, I've got Columbus and Club America in the final. I can't see MLS. I just, I think they had their chance last year that with the teams playing in that neutral zone, neutral uh, environment there. I think LAFC was as close as we're going to see since Toronto, obviously, in 2018 uh, on penalties. And uh, I just can't see an MLS team getting it done yet. They just don't have the, the cap space. They don't have the, the same opportunities the Mexican teams do. So for me, I've got Club America winning it all and lifting the trophy as CONCACAF Champions League winners this season. So that wraps up the predictions here uh, and, and the preview for this tournament. Again, starts out on April 6th, just a few days away. And uh, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. And hell, if you're interested, check out that join button as well for our channel. You can uh, be a member here at Sons of a Pitch Soccer Podcast with cool emojis and all that kind of stuff. Really appreciate it and helps our show continue to grow as we've done so quickly and uh, continue the role. All right, guys, Ryan, let everybody know where they can find you. And thanks for coming on, my man. Appreciate it. No problem. On YouTube, you can find me, Ryan Anderson. It's just my name. If you have to put Toronto in there to get to the channel easier, do it. But it's just my name, Ryan Anderson. On Instagram and TikTok, it's RyanAnderson.27. On Twitter, it's RyanAnderson underscore 27. I'm a very good follow. So I have a lot of good content on Twitter. I think I think I make some good tweets, even if they don't get the likes that they deserve. But hey, what can you do? My, right. my sense of humor is niche, so. <laughs> there you go. That's that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this CONCACAF Champions League for 2021 preview and prediction show. I am Mike Guillaume, your host, Sons of a Pitch Soccer Podcast, and we will see you for the next live stream reaction in the CONCACAF Champions League for Toronto FC and Lyon on April the 6th. Thanks, guys. We'll see you then. Have a good one.